All right, we are looking at, this is section uh, 2.3.1, and this is from CC2, and specifically number 2-16, and we've got some diamond problems. So remember the diamond problem pattern right here? The top number is the product. And the bottom number is the sum. And then each of these are just the numbers that the numbers that you would get the product from and get the sum from. All right? So if we're looking at A, I'm gonna get a little bit bigger here so we can see it. A has a zero and a twenty-five. So I need to find two numbers that multiply to be zero, but add to be 25. Well, in order to get a product of zero, the only way to get a product of zero is to have one of the numbers be zero. Zero times anything is zero, right? And then if I'm going to get a sum of 25, I have to say zero plus something is 25. So the other number has to be 25. Zero times 25 zero zero plus 25 is 25 so there's a b i have a product of negative 30 and one of the numbers is six so six times something is negative 30 right so six times something is equal to negative 30 right i have a product to be negative 30. So what does that have to be? Well, 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 5 is 30, but I need the product to be negative. So one of them has to be negative. The 6 is already positive, so it's got to be a negative 5. And then if I find the sum, 6 plus negative 5, that equals positive 1. Remember when you have a positive and a negative number and you're adding them, you subtract the absolute values, and then the sign of the sum is based on the greater absolute value and six has more positives than five has negatives so it's a positive one see we have 11 11 is one of the numbers and the sum is 25 so 11 plus something right so 11 plus something is equal to 25 well to figure that out we just subtract 11 from 25 and we'll get 14 11 plus 14 is 25. So if I multiply those two numbers, 11 times 14, right? Do the, do the product of 11 and 14. Do that real quick. I get 154, right? If I do the product of 11 and 14, I'll get 154. So my product is 154. Last one, D. Now... I've got the product is 234 and the sum is 31. So to look at this one, I take my product, I'm gonna take 234, I'm gonna break it down to all the possible multiples and then find out which one's gonna add to be 31, right? So if we say two times something is 234, what is that something? So 2 times 117 is 234. So that can't be a sum of 31. So what else? Now this is where it gets tricky. So here's what I tend to do. I look at my numbers and I know if I add these numbers up, 2 plus 3 plus 4, 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 9, right? If I Here's a trick of seeing if there's another multiple. 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 9. So that tells me that 3 goes into it and 9 goes into it. So I can find a product of 3 times something is 234. So I'll take 234 and divide it by 9. All right, excuse me, divide it by 3, and I get 78. Well... 3 and 78 don't add to be 31, so let's try 9. So what 234 divided by 9 is 26. So again, I'm looking, let's see, 2 times 26, 
nine times twenty. No, excuse me, nine plus twenty six is still not there. It's not thir not thirty one. So I'm, I still have another number that goes into thirty two thirty four because I'm looking at this this twenty six and I see that twenty six is divisible by thirteen. So if twenty six is divisible by thirteen, that would mean two thirty four is as well is divisible by thirteen. So two thirty four divided by thirteen is 18. So now I have 13 times 18 is 234. And sure enough, 13 plus 18 is 31. So there's my two numbers. So that's the process that I go through is looking for all the possible multiples of the product to find the right one that adds to be 31. All right, there you go.